when I was doing history, I was, when I was really bad at it, mm -hmm. um, I actually got an award. I wanted to be photoshopped into like with Mary Kate and Ashley. You know, we all had that phase. Yeah. <laughs> Rewinding back to how I first started. Hi, my name is Liana Hanif. I'm a graphic designer, and three things you need to know about me is that I love cats, my work is very colorful, and I live in a house with a good view. My room. Thank you. It's a nice little area. Um, Glad you like it. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, again, the view is amazing. Don't even see it, but yeah, it's pretty cool. We saw the rain pass by just now. And yeah. <laughs> so, this is where you do your work? Yes, okay. this is pretty much where I make the magic happen when it comes to freelance work. Mm -hmm. So, besides working at Progressive, yes. I do some freelance work and mm -hmm. on the side. I have my own clients um, locally and as well right. as international. So I guess working from home has always been something comfortable for me. I've yes. been doing it since I was young. And it's just good to be in your own space, I for guess, sure. for it. Yeah, a because designer to just, yeah. Besides working with like in a team, mm -hmm. I think sometimes you just need to be in your own thoughts mm -hmm. as well. And I think the view does help because I mean, it's been said that being relaxed kind of helps you become more creative. It boosts okay. creativity in that way. Yeah. So I'm lucky for that. That's awesome. You need to find more time to relax then. You can come over anytime. <laughs> <laughs> so this room that you have is so nice in itself, but would you say it's your ideal workspace? And if not, yeah. what would your ideal workspace look like? I would definitely have a, a definitely a bigger studio. Mm -hmm. I would have a studio that has like a photo area, photography area, some mm -hmm. video. I would love to have own some more cameras mm -hmm. and ideally more Macs or <laughs> tablets. I think just to have your own space where you can just pick up anything and work from scratch. Like nowadays it's all digital. So I would love to have like a station where I could just get, you know, hands on with my work. Cause yeah. I think that's what it's lacking nowadays. I think mm -hmm. when you're working so much and it's such a fast pace that you don't have time to sit down and draw something from scratch or create new textures or yeah. something just by hand. Mm -hmm. So that's something I wish I had for sure. I do want to hear from you a little bit about your journey. Okay. I know you mentioned that you didn't start off um, doing or wanting to be a graphic designer. Yeah. So yeah, how did this all come um, about? I actually wanted to be a fine artist. Mm -hmm. I have done a lot of paintings. When I did my international baccalaureate course, we ISB. did- ISB? Yeah, at mm -hmm. ISB. It was mostly paintings that I did. Because I think back then, I didn't really focus too much on graphic design. Yeah. I didn't really have that much education in it. Right. And I didn't really know any graphic designers at the time. So I thought, okay, I'm good at art but I'm really bad with science or maths mm -hmm. or anything that did require art. I was bad at, I just wished I was, but <laughs> the way I approached it was whenever we had course or coursework or projects, whatever information I was given and I had to display it, I would make great posters. I would, for geography, if we're doing something about volcanoes, I'll just make a cool concept of volcanoes mm -hmm. and just decorate it really nicely. And I think, that's what designers do. I think they just display information visually. Mm -hmm. And I think that was something that came quite natural to me at the time. So I, but I didn't know that was a, that yeah. was a job for that. It's a great way to put it. Yeah. Displaying I, information. It was, yeah. it was quite funny because when I was doing history, I was, when I was really bad at it, mm -hmm. um, I actually got an award just because I wow. decorated one of my courseworks really right. well. It's like, you did a good difference. job. Yeah, so <laughs> that kind of gave me motivation to yeah. continue doing what I enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. So after I graduated, I worked at a local creative agency and that's when I started to pick up the passion because I was starting to work with seniors, mm -hmm. uh, gra senior graphic designers who are already in that flow of the creative industry and they had experience and they were teaching me things that I probably wouldn't have learned in uni. Yeah, and it was pretty 
exciting because I didn't know how, like, how the creative industry worked, and right. I think it was something that I was lacking. Mm -hmm. But I picked it up really quickly, and I think that's what's something that I managed to do well was that I knew how to pick it up and motivate myself. Right. With you being in the creative industry now as a creative, if you were to describe it in three words, locally. Locally. Mm -hmm. What would they be? The industry? The industry. Um, I would say it's still growing. That's one word. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I would say we need to nurture it as well. And there's a lot of talent. I think what we need to do is collaborate a lot more with the locals here. Because you could work with a photographer and a designer and you could come up with something really amazing. Right. I think one of my favorite collaborations for the past two years is probably working with Relentless because I, I like to create their musical posters yeah. for them. It's fun working with Relentless is that mm -hmm. I got to play around with a lot of colors. So that's probably something that you'll see a lot in my work is the colors. So happy that they keep coming back and that they like my work. And it's fun to collaborate with them because it's another part of our arts in Brunei. It's another mm -hmm. part of the creative side, it's the theater mm -hmm. side. So it's really fun to work with the different side of the creative industry. So what's um, your most uh, favorite project that you've worked on so far? Um, I would say the magazine. Yeah. These, these are probably right. like my babies here yeah. in the office. I kind of, I've, for the past four issues, mm -hmm. they're probably my favorites because I actually had like almost 80, 90 percent on them. Wow. And awesome. they're 72 pages. So in each? Yes. Yeah. And we, collab we work together with the team when it comes to concepting the ideas and the theme of each issue. Yeah. So what's the process usually with putting all the pages together? Um, well, it actually starts by the theme. Once we have a theme, um, mm -hmm. I usually have to come up with some kind of consistent concept for the whole issue. Right. And because there's different sections in the magazine, there's like the feature stories, there's mm -hmm. the, the tech part of it, and then there's the product part of it. So it kind of, um, I would say that I would have to come up with some kind of visual elements that would go for each section, just so that people would know that this is one part, and one right. part, and one part. Yeah. So, but also keeping it consistent at the same time. So mm. it's a lot of fun, yeah. but it's a lot of work. I think sometimes people don't really understand how much work it go that goes into it, yeah. because it's the little details that really make a difference in a, in a piece of magazine. Was it what you expected it to be, working as a creative in this industry, um, being in the middle of it now? I would say I, I wouldn't know what to expect because I've, this is probably my first time experiencing the creative industry mm -hmm. and the local community. Yeah. I know I've seen how the international people work together mm -hmm. and it's probably a lot faster, fast paced and probably very different to how we are here. Mm -hmm. But I think what we have to learn is time that, you know, things can't be rushed when it comes to creativity because I think that's one of the issues that I have to deal with is that people are rushing to get things done. Right. I guess maybe it's because it's a lot of um, approvals that will take a lot in the process. It's just not that smooth. And I think when we have a more smoother process, and the creative will just flow. Right. Is that a challenge that you face with your own freelance work as yeah. well? Yes. Mm -hmm. I think there's a misunderstanding of how, how long or how short things should be. I think people don't know how much work goes into a piece of project, yeah. especially like little details, right? Yeah. I think we see this, I um, don't want to call it a culture because I hope it isn't, this yeah. copying or yeah. mimicking, not just in design or art, yeah. but like generally lifestyles or career paths. I think generally, I don't know anything, people need to take more risks yeah. and create their own paths forward instead of following exactly how their yeah. mentor did it or yeah. idol did it. Yeah, it's all about innovating, right? I think what we're really good at being entrepreneurs because we all have that, I don't, I don't know how to describe it, but like we thrive to be successful. 
And I think our country has that kind of drive, mm. that hunger for making Brunei something, putting some putting Brunei on the map somewhere. It'd be cool to even like build a community of creatives that one day someone international can come and check our work out and right. probably, you know, get Brunei to help out with some creative work. Like, yeah. Because we have so much talent here. It'd be such a waste to like not get them out there. What do you think is the barrier stopping um, our local artists or creatives? sending their work out or putting their work out there? I think they people don't know how to start. The starting point is really important. It took me a while to actually get international clients. Mm -hmm. Usually I started off having like those uh, freelancers website like Upwork, but it just didn't work for me at the time. And it's just, for me, it's quite difficult to communicate with someone over like email. I kind of want to just uh, have a chat Skype, yeah. Skype or something. Yeah. So my, I had a first, my first international client this year, which was at a Japanese restaurant, which was really fun. How did they find you or how did they um, find them? One of my friends recommended me okay. to them. So I think it's also networking. It's really important to network around. That guy was like, okay, sure, let me just try it out. Cause I'm sure it's quite like difficult to find the right designer for you. Yeah. Even though I'm all the way in Brunei, mm. they see my work on my website mm. and then they start to see the stuff that I do. And I think that's how you kind of just get networked around. Yeah. So yeah. Um, going back to your journey a little bit, taking a couple steps back, are your parents creative as well? No, uh, my parents are not creative mm -hmm. people, but they managed to raise me and my other brother, who is, we're both creatives mm -hmm. in the family. My brother's a photographer, right. and I think he's the person who kind of got me into digital work mm -hmm. at the time when he was first starting out. I have to tell you a story about how it happened because there was one time that uh, we only had one computer in the house. It was like uh, Windows, we had Photoshop, <laughs> and there was one time my brother was editing, editing a photo of him uh, into another photo of another celebrity, <laughs> and I was like, oh man, I want one too! <laughs> I want to be Photoshopped into like with Mary-Kate and Ashley, mm. you know, we all had that phase. Yeah. <laughs> and that's when I wanted to be like, can you please put me in like next to her, like make it look real? <laughs> and I think that was when I first discovered Photoshop, because I was like, wow, this is a pretty cool tool, I don't know you could do this. Yeah. Because it was so difficult to like get him to do it, like get like, create that photo for me, I started to pick it up myself. And I started to play around with textures, and then that's when um, I had my Deviant art. I don't know mm -hmm. if you've heard Deviant art. Yeah. yeah, back then that was it like, I think it is. Okay. Um, that's when I started to pick up Photoshop and mm -hmm. learning how to edit it myself. So that's when I started doing photography, photo manipulation, and I stopped for a while because I lost confidence and mm -hmm. I don't know. That was just for your own? Yeah, it was just a hobby. Yeah. I used to do it with my um, with my friend after school. We used to like take a lot of photography on eyes. She used to be obsessed with taking photos of my eyes and I would just lie there and, <laughs> and she would spray water on my eye just to get that texture, Hi. like the droplet texture. So I was like, okay, this is too extreme. <laughs> but it was really fun to do, yeah. just to get creative even in your own time and it's not related to what you're studying mm. or it just came as a hobby and I think that's why I knew that I wanted this path. Yeah. We'd love to see some of your work sure. that you have if I'll you'd like to show us. you some now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is my workstation mm -hmm. and so I'll show you quickly that this is uh, one of the things that I've been working on for uh, a, a Japanese restaurant in Singapore. The one that you mentioned earlier. Yeah. So I'll, this is pretty much how I come up with a concept. I would just look at fonts mm -hmm. and then see which style kind of fits together. And I actually have to, well, the client requested for these patterns, for these right. um, fish uh, patterns and it's for a Japanese restaurant, of course. So. Mm. so, and I played around with colors and concepts and this is how nice. my artboard would look like. Very messy, but I think that's kind of how your brain would look like if you would put it on a right. big screen. Mm
Thank you.